Now that parts are finally showing up in the mail, it's time to equip this Tacoma for some long range expeditions. Stay tuned. In the last video, we did a few minor things. We touched up the paint, we changed the engine oil, and installed a radio. Today, we're gonna to be doing things that are a little bit more complicated than that, but I'm all on my own. As you can probably tell, Brad isn't here. He's out on a week-long trip right now, so if I mess up, there's no one to help me. I think this might actually be the first trail recon video he hasn't been in. All right, so the first modification I'm gonna be doing today is ripping these back seats out and installing a full goose gear platform back here. Now look, I'm 23. Usually it's only me, my girlfriend, and her dog. We just don't need the back seats. It'll be nice to have a nice flat surface back here where we can put maybe a fridge, a dog bed, throw our gear, our bags, anything we might need, and all those extra cubbies that are gonna be underneath, it's gonna be nice for storing my everyday carry. So first up was to start taking everything out of the back seats, and this is stuff I keep in the truck all the time. Took out my first aid kit, some recovery gear, and then I also have a battery charger and a tool bag. Now, opening up the goose gear, I almost feel like a kid on Christmas. It's nice to see the care that they put into packaging this, so that way it doesn't break on its way to you. It's also nice to see the first impressions of the quality of the goose gear seem to be really nice. Now, the easiest way to get the seats out is to fold them flat and it just makes accessing the bolts on the back a lot easier. Now, before we get too far, I should tell you this is not going to be a step-by-step -step installation, just more my experiences in sawing the goose gear. I've always loved helping my dad with projects in the garage, but with this being my first time doing any major upgrades by myself, I was actually a little nervous at first. Thankfully, as soon as I started, this felt more like therapy than this big project I was hoping not to mess up on. So a previous owner tried to put some type of custom sound system back here and there's all this sound deadening and this cheap plywood back here. It looks like it was just screwed in straight to the metal. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect the goose gear but we're going to try to remove as much as we can and uh, see what challenges it brings us. Now, I don't really know exactly what material this was. At first, I thought it was some type of dynamat, but it felt very rubbery and gooey, and it was just sticking to everything. It was really a pain to get off. A part of me feels bad just ripping all this out, because I'm sure at one point, the previous owner put a lot of hard work into this. I just wish they did a little better job and it was a little cleaner without all this sound deadening and spray foam and drywall screws going everywhere. It's making it a little difficult to take out. Now, this back wall of the truck probably gave me the most problems. At first, it was layered in that sound detonating, a bunch of black duct tape, and once I finally got that all off, there was a bunch of the spray foam underneath. 
This stuff, I don't know how long has been sitting there, but it felt almost like concrete when I was chipping away at it. It was very difficult to get out and it was in all these little nooks and crannies. All right, so it's a new day. I just got home from work. We're gonna see if we can put this goose gear system together and get it thrown in the truck. We ran into a little bit of a problem the other day. Uh, the sound deadening from the custom speaker box that was in there was just, it was just layered on with duct tape and spray foam and that stuff was caked on almost like rock. So that got a little frustrating. I also chased down a speaker wire trying to remove it and chased it all the way to the dash, disconnected it. Now the speakers don't work. So I was messing around with that and I just needed a break. So today we're gonna to see if we can get it done. And then something new showed up in the mail that hopefully we'll be able to, to install tonight. Now that it was finally time to start putting the goose gear in, I found it was a little easier to work with it without the drawers in. Just made it a little easier to move around. The one thing I loved about this was how simple it was to put together. Now, on the driver and passenger side of the goose gear, each section has a support board that needs to be slid into the T-slot material. It was super easy to do. There's only three bolts you have to loosen up, slide it right into place, and then tighten it back down. The ease of this goose gear system really impressed me. We did also opt to get these like side covers for the goose gear. That way it just makes it a little cleaner look, but same process as the support boards, just three bolts, unloosen, slide in, and then tighten back down. These brackets you see here are to hold up the back wall of the goose gear system. Other than the support boards, the sideboards, and these brackets, that's pretty much all the insulation that's needed to get it ready to throw on the back of the truck. The closer this gets to being ready to be thrown in the back of the truck, the more excited I get. You would think with having a truck that you would have a lot of storage, but unless you want to put your gear in the back of the truck and get it all dirty, you really only have the back seats. This is going to give me so much more space to throw all my gear. As I'm working on this, I'm thinking that maybe I can build some type of custom storage system back here. I don't know if that includes the fridge, maybe a couple drawers, or maybe just a place that I can throw my stuff into. But the possibilities are endless. Mounting the goose gear to the truck is really simple. There's a few bolts where the factory seats used to be mounted to, and a few under where the factory storage used to be underneath the seats.
so day three of working on the truck. Finally got the goose gear all buttoned up last night. I'm super happy with it. All this is super solid. Uh, lots of storage, room for a fridge, dog bed, all my gear. Um, there were some issues with the mounting points because all that spray foam got into where we were supposed to put the bolts. And so I had to drill those out and just getting everything lined up with all the mess that used to be back here was a little difficult. But now we have a few more things. Stage three sent us some stuff. So we're gonna do something in the back and something in the front. All right, so now we're gonna be installing some headlights. These are the Morimoto XB LED headlights. And right off the bat, I love the way these look. They look very clean, almost like they could be factory. And one of the first things I wanted to do on the Tacoma was to get rid of those faded, yellowed out headlights. Cause one, they didn't look good. They kind of dated the truck. And two, they just weren't very bright. So these have two LED projectors and a daytime running light going around. I'm not sure if that running light is gonna be amber or clear, so that's gonna be a bit of a surprise when we plug it in, but I'm so ready for it. After seeing a few videos on how to take the headlights out, it seems pretty straightforward. All you have to do is remove the grill with a few bolts and clips, take a small trim piece out on each side, and remove the headlights with only three bolts each. Now, I must say, I did break a clip on each side of these small trim pieces, but thankfully, afterwards, they both went back in just fine. Now that the grill and the trim pieces are removed, the headlights are only held in by three bolts. Two of them are very accessible just on top, but the third one is a little trickier to get to. As you'll see, you have to remove two bolts and a clip just to access the bolt through underneath the fender liner. After that, it's just a little bit of feeling around to make sure you have the right one, and then the headlight will come right out. One thing I'm really liking about this 2015 second gen Tacoma is just how simple it is. There's no crazy over engineering, no wild sensors to worry about, it's just a simple truck. Now I know some people give me a hard time for not choosing a Jeep, but this truck has really grown on me a lot the past few months. Oh, but these headlights did not come out the way you think they would. It took a little wiggling just to find the right spot, and then eventually, they came right out. One thing I really like about these Morimoto XP headlights is that they're just plug and play. There's no cutting wires, there's no installing anti-flicker resistors. It's just simple, just plug them in and bolt them back up. One thing I did forget to mention and also forget to film is that you have to swap over the turn signals from the factory headlight over into the new LED housing. Now that everything's all buttoned up, it was time to test them out. And man, do these things look good. I love the amber daytime running light, and the LED projectors were just way brighter than the factory lights. So far, I'm liking these things a lot. Now that we got one side done, it's time to do the next. But I'm not going to make you guys sit through that whole thing all over again. I'm ready to see what both of these headlights look like on the truck 
and just how much these are going to change the overall look. And man, do these headlights look good. They give the truck a nice modern update and definitely a bit of a facelift. They're also going to be super bright out on the trails and I'm honestly, I just love the way they look. Again, huge thanks to Stage 3 Motorsports for sending these over. Make sure you go check them out. So I think the headlights turned out great. I mean, I love the way they look. They're super easy to install and they just look way better than the factory ones. All right. Now we have another product from Stage 3 Motorsports that we're going to install in the bed. This one should be super easy and it's kind of going to go along with maybe some future plans that we have. So you're probably wondering what could it be that we're doing to the bed. Is it a storage system? Air compressor? Well, no. What we're doing is a bed rug. This is going to help out quite a bit with some future changes that will be coming in a few weeks. But you'll have to come back for a future video to find out what it is. Now, when I first found out that I wanted one of these, I wasn't sure what exactly would be required for an install. Did you drill it in? Did you glue it down? Honestly, I didn't know. But turns out this thing was a lot easier to install than maybe I originally thought. First, you just have to zip together these two pieces and then everything is held down by Velcro. Now, if your truck does have some small storage cubbies or some type of power in the back, you might have to cut out a few holes, but honestly, it was super easy. I did figure out that you do have to make them a little bigger than the template was that was pre-stamped, but no big deal. To secure the rug to the bed of the truck, all it's going to be is some Velcro. I would recommend using some alcohol and a microfiber towel to clean the surface before you attach the Velcro so that way it doesn't start peeling up. I really like how this bed rug can be just taken in and out and doesn't make any permanent changes. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering if the rug in the back of a truck is a good idea. But the company claims that is UV and fade resistant, stain resistant, mold and mildew resistant, doesn't absorb water, and is non-skid. So honestly, I guess we'll find out over time, but it seems really high quality and comfortable enough to just work on on my hands and knees in the back of the truck. Now, I did have to end up taking out this rail that holds some tie downs out of the back of the truck just because the bed rug wouldn't fit all the way up with it there. The ones on the sides were fine, but for some reason, this one against the cab just wouldn't work. I was a little worried about getting this power outlet through the carpet, but if you cut the hole big enough to slide the whole thing through at an angle, it fits just fine.
Eventually, I do want to do some type of storage in the back of the truck, whether that's maybe some pull-out drawers, a kitchen, a toilet, who knows. But honestly, I think working with this carpet, I might be able to keep it in and just cut through it later on. I did find the best way to figure out where the velcro needs to be laid down was to just fold the carpet over and see where exactly it makes contact with the truck bed. This made lining it up so much easier. I have to say, installing all this stuff by myself does feel pretty good. Not having any help, not having a shop do it, just learning about everything that you're doing, the products you're using, it's honestly kind of an accomplishment. The final thing to do for this bed rug was to just take this plastic trim piece off the tailgate, tuck the bed rug underneath, and bolt everything back up. Overall, this install might be a little tedious with all the velcro you have to lay down, but honestly, it was super simple and I think it looks really good. All right, that's it for this video. We did headlights, goose gear, and a bed rug. That's the most I've ever done by myself, just working in the garage. I've never done anything as extensive as the goose gear without any help, so that was really fun, and it was just a good learning opportunity. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check us out at trailrecon.com, and see you next time.